your yep. parent will not get the care they need, or you're going to have to leave your job. Right. Which means you're going to reduce your income to, depending on what it is, almost nothing in terms of your household income to do what you want to do, which is to give your parent the dignity they deserve with care. And can you imagine if Medicare is uh, impacted or or Obamacare, for that matter. I and mean, look what at what thinking? Donald Trump has been talking about for years. And look at his project, 2025. People should Google it. I mean, what they're doing and what he's talking about in terms of attacking Social Security, Medicare, undoing the Affordable Care Act, and which means the insurance companies can come back and deny people with pre-existing conditions. All of this is very real and very much at stake in this election. Wow. What yeah. a fantastic, uh, substantive, substantive. substantive interview yes. substantive um, does this speak to anyone else i i would have given anything to be able to keep my mom at home it, it is that is such an amazing uh issue that impact it's going to impact everybody i yeah. think at some point and it, it, that's what a real interview is not did you say this thing about what part of china you were in 40 years ago or do you don't donald trump doesn't think you're black what do you think about that like t- t- dumb questions right this was like a just the Issues that uh, uh, impact real people. And anyway, that issue really spoke to me. Speaking of dreamy, hunky men, why? Bob Seska joins us Bob now. Bob Seska's about ready to speak to you. To bring you a special broadcast. You're cute and I love you, Bob Seska. Where are you coming from? Bob is calling us from Washington. You Seska thing. Washington, D.C. Oh, money. hello. Hello, Paul Bunyan. Hello. Look at you with yes. your, your husky beard. Hmm. Hi. Good morning. <laughs> Hi. God, I love Howard Stern. Yeah. Wow. yeah. I, I've been yeah. I've been a Stern show listener since oh my God, since the eighties. Yeah. 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 I remember I used... he uh he was in Washington DC on DC one oh one for right. a period of time yeah. uh, when I was a kid. And I'll never forget how he was fired from there, but I'd rather not talk about that. What a great interview yeah. with yeah. Kamala Harris. To, yeah, I, that was wonderful. I used to uh, well, listen to him every, when I finished my show in Hot 97, everybody. Uh-huh. In Dublin, New York City, the late 90s. I used to listen when I walked home. I walked like 40 blocks home every day listening to, to Howard. He's always been a great interviewer. But oh, it, yeah, yeah. I mean, I was uh, I was actually on his show once because uh, oh. I, I did a series of prank calls using uh, <laughs> Sergeant Hartman's voice. You know, the the drill sergeant from Full Metal Jacket. Yeah, yeah. I took oh, a bunch funny. of clips of of him yelling at the uh, recruits there, and I use I, I made prank calls using those clips. Wow, Sergeant Hartman. I've prank never calls. been on Howard's <laughs> so show. Howard was playing those. Yeah, he's mentioned you on yeah. his show though, Stephanie. He's mentioned that he likes me, but I've never been on his show. My sister was on. Bucket. Yeah. Yeah, Howard. Bucket list. Okay. Anyway. Well, he knows who you are. That's yeah. the important oh, well. thing. Right. <laughs> and we had Robin on the show. Yeah, Robin's a couple fantastic. Of times, yeah, we've had Robin on. She's fantastic. Yeah. Um, so, Bob, I yeah, this is what we were saying. It just, you know, she's doing such a smart set strategy. She was so great on The View, on Colbert. You know, yeah. you, as we keep saying, in such a fractured media environment, this is where your people are now, you know? And so I'm glad she's not, you know, listening to Andrea Mitchell. Like, oh, you got to do way more interviews and serious interview. Like, that was a right. serious interview. Yeah. I mean, yeah. for any of yeah. us, and you're going to, I'm going to, newsflash, you're going to have elderly parents someday, you know? And it, yes, it really yes, is a, a huge, huge issue. Announcement. Yeah. yeah. The, the View announcement about Medicare and long term care was uh, i can't underscore how important that was uh i it was in a sim- similar situation as you stephanie as far as caring for a parent who had to be in assisted living and the ridiculous lopsided yeah. cost benefit yeah. of that the expense yeah. of and all we could do care yeah all we could is, do is try to pay for some extra help visit all the time god bless my sister lives there so she yeah. went every day you know i flew back three thousand miles as often as i could i know you just went through with, with your yeah. dad and so mm-hmm. yeah it's but oh my god how refreshing bob to hear like real issues that impact real people and not oh this. yeah and this is going to resonate this is going to yeah. resonate with people because we all have parents uh, you know and as they get older we have to start considering this and the fact of the matter is that you know just a mid-level assisted living facility yeah. Yeah. is basically like a brand new car every month right that's yeah. how expensive it is I, you know it's at least twenty thousand yeah. dollars a month i was listening i i uh, watched uh, ellen degeneres's uh stando special and her mom has dementia now you know we all remember her mom from her show and it yeah. just we all relate she said you know she was so identified as ellen's mom she said she doesn't know i'm ellen anymore and she doesn't know she's my mom but she said she's happy, and she was talking sort of about how great the facility is. And I'm thinking, well, yeah, because you're Ellen DeGeneres. Right, you can afford it. <laughs> Most of us are yeah. not. 
<laughs> you know. Right, right. Um, yeah, I mean, there are some very nice assist- assisted living facilities yeah. out there, but you're going to have to pay for them. And then as the pay scale goes down, as the as the price point goes down, they get increasingly scary yeah. as you get toward yeah, the trust bottom. Trust me, I know. And, and that's the thing that uh, I think so much, so many of us face. And wouldn't it be great if our loved ones could be at home as they recover from whatever is affecting them or dealing with a disability yeah. or in end of life situations, the, the, the best yeah. thing psychologically. And that's the, the real yeah. tragedy. I hate to break the show down, but the, the real tragedy is not just having to face the end of life, but then have to have to do it in yeah. one of these places where you're a stranger and nothing is familiar around you. And some no, of them I, can be pretty dismal it, and abusive. And, yeah. and also, Bob, you know, you face like um, just impossible choices. You know, like I live mm-hmm. 3,000 miles away, but I, I looked into having her here in my house and paying for care. And it, oh, my God, yeah, <laughs> the cost is something yeah. no normal person can afford. And then she's 3,000 miles away from the other half of the family. And it's just, you know, so but anyway, a lot of real people are facing the, these. Sort yes, of yes. And choices. this is what, another reason why Kamala Harris's campaign is so important and why her presidency is is so vital to the future of this country not just from a democracy point of view but also just from a sustainability point of view for us to be able to live our lives and not go bankrupt because of everyday things that we all every single one of us has to yeah. face yeah and so um, that's uh, so crucial yeah by the way in a totally unrelated story our friend john pavlovitz who just did uh, durham sexy liberal with us said uh, donald trump has advanced dementia and the fact that so many people are ignoring this because they don't have the moral strength to change their vote is a disgrace I mean, yeah. Bob, I know the whole, I, you look at the polls, she's ahead. You know, we had Fernando Armandi on yes, She's definitely ahead, you know, but it is mm-hmm. terrifying. I get your don't get happy because you're just like, oh, my God, we're still this close on the precipice of uh, complete disaster. You, you, this Russia yeah. story, like how many more now warnings do we need? <laughs> Right. For some reason, this guy has managed to weave his way through the raindrops and not get wet somehow, where there are all these things. I mean, every day there seems like there's another thing that in normal times would destroy any other politician. But Donald Trump keeps getting a pass every single time. And the New York York Times just did a piece finally on his mental, obviously, deterioration. And I'm like, people are already voting. I'm like, I hope it's not too late for the mainstream media to wake up and go, crap. And and between the horrendousness that we heard about from Bob Woodward's book uh, yesterday to what happened last week, where Donald Trump referred to Purple Heart recipients (sighs) that were injured on his watch, he referred to them as just having headaches. Mm -hmm. This is the sort of thing that, again, you talk about any, I mean, I, I always go back to the example of Howard Dean after the Iowa caucus yelling into the microphone yeah. going, Yar! and then that was the end of him. Yeah. Yeah. It was, it was like the press yeah. just decided to write him off. Oh, well, Howard Dean's an unserious guy because he went yar at a rally. Yeah. And the, the Mike, Mike was isolated and all those things. But Donald Trump does some sort of horrendous thing, some sort of trespass against ethics and morality and the values of being an American every single day. Yeah. And the press is just like, well, boys will be boys. Let's just, uh, well, ignore you- that. Because he always does that. Bob, you did a bunch of bulleting, God bless you, on uh, threads. <laughs> you know, you talk about Andrea Mitchell saying, oh, Kamala needs to do more serious interview." meaning with her. <laughs> I mean, yeah, and you said, right. when was the last time Donald did an interview with a non-MAGA platform? Uh, I, I, never. I'm practically in this election cycle. You said, I'm, I'm positive Andrea Mitchell doesn't know. He bailed on the traditional 60 Minutes se- segment, FFS. That means four. Or for F's, F's sake. sake. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. yeah. Uh, he chickened out of a third debate, and yet Andrea's anecdotal concern trolling is about Kamala hack punditry. Thank you. Mm-hmm. And I'm glad yeah. I'm glad she's doing the strategy she is. You uh, retweeted Bradley Moss, who said, remember when Tim Walls messes up which year he was in China in the 80s, it's a scandal. When he mixed up IVF with IUI treatment, it's a scandal. Trump straight up lies like this on a regular basis, and it's, oh, well, that's just Trump. He does these things. I, yeah. We cannot afford this double standard anymore, Bob. It, it's terrifying, and we're less than a month out. Well, here's what makes it so absurd is there was not only Andrea Mitchell, but uh, this is happening all across at least the, I mean, obviously things are happening on Fox News that are just absolute madness. But in terms of the quote-unquote respectable cable news platforms and op-ed pages and websites, this is happening almost every day. But yesterday it was so glaring. I mean, I'm sorry, on Monday, it was so glaring between Andrea Mitchell and uh, Politico publishing pieces and saying things on their air about 
Kamala Harris ducking interviews when that very night she was on the most prestigious TV news program Thank you. in the history of American That's broadcasting. Not ser- since when is in 60 Minutes a serious <laughs> interview? Ridiculous. Anyway, and just... the, and the, the questions were tough, and they were certainly adversarial. They were everything they needed to be. They were gotcha. Be. So and, was Dana yes. Bash. She did Dana Bash interview. Like, I, I'm just, okay. You Right, right. And then, But still, it's as it's, if it's, it's happening in absence of the facts in terms of what's actually going on. Yeah. Or, yes, Kamala Harris is appearing on podcasts and on shows that regular people, undecided voters and independent voters watch. But it doesn't seem to matter that she also goes on yeah. mainstream uh, shows or, or se- like serious news shows like 60 Minutes and with Dana Bash, as you were saying, just ignored because there's a, a script, there's a narrative. We've been talking yeah. about this for many years when it comes to presidential elections. Everything has to slot into a pre existing template. And so they use that template, they recycle it every four years, and that's what we see here. Let's I, plunk this story in, let's put this story into that yeah. place. And it's just. I, I gotta say, yeah, I love you. I just keep hammering at this, Bob, on threads or Twitter, wherever you are. You, you retweeted someone that said, Harris Waltz gaff. Tim Wall said he was in Hong Kong while the Beijing protest, protests happened in 1989, but he actually arrived slightly afterwards. Trump Vance gaff. Donald Trump uh, has said some racial groups are genetically inferior and should be removed from America. I mean, there's just no... Uh, treating this like a normal election. You retweeted uh, yeah. Jen, who said, Harris answer on policy shifts. In the last four years, I've been vice president. I've been traveling our country. I've been listening to folks seeking what is possible in terms of common ground. I believe in building consensus. And you just said, once again, we need to point out Trump hasn't even been asked about 99.999% of his most horrendous lies, failures, shifting positions, and he never will be because our political press is blindingly incompetent in the face of a fascist, authoritarian con man. Pathetic. Yeah. I mean... Yeah. And and when I talk about uh, blindingly incompetent when it comes to the press, I'm not necessarily talking about the reporters on the ground. I'm talking about the editors, the uh, showrunners on cable. I'm talking about the people who control the content and guide what the narrative is in their platform. And they are completely failing to protect the American people. And granted, their job isn't to protect the American people, but their their job is certainly to report the news. And what bigger news can there be than losing our democracy? This is where we stand right now, where after 250 years of blood and sacrifice to protect how we elect our leaders in this country, there are a bunch of people uh, who are willing to just throw it away because of some ridiculous reason that they picked up in passing from cable news. And so I think one of the centerpieces, one of the things we're kind of dancing around when we talk about the press and the closeness of this election is the Electoral College. Yeah. If, if it weren't for the Electoral College, we, I think, would be feeling a lot more confident right now in the prospects of this election. But because of this ridiculous anti-democratic system that the framers set up, uh, we're now sort of on this... <laughs> ridiculous precipice yeah. of landing on another Donald Trump presidency that will never end. And so I, I want to emphasize the fact that if, and I should say, when we win this, and I have to go around, go outside, turn around three Not times. Not one balloon, Bob. <laughs> but if we win this, we should redirect our efforts to passing the national popular vote interstate thank you. compact, oh, thank you. which will effectively um, eliminate the electoral college. Um, that yeah. means that all the states that ratified that bill would allocate their electoral votes to the winner of the national popular vote, not yeah. the state popular vote. And so that's people are a, actively a, dying because of Trump's lies right now. I was going to ask yeah. you: Is your is Buzz Burbank yeah, is evacuating? Okay? Is he in the uh, He's area? He's still there. He, as far as okay. I know, as of yesterday, they were sticking uh, where they are. Uh, okay. Which I mean, they're on relative high ground. I mean, high ground for yeah. Florida yeah. isn't that high, but it's still higher than being yeah. on the coastline. So. Yeah that regard they're safe but it's yeah it's uh, sketchy i don't know what they're gonna end up yeah. doing also overnight the traje- trajectory seems to be going a little bit south of tampa which puts yes. tampa on the good side of the hurricane not right. on the bad side it's of terrifying. the hurricane it's all yeah terrifying. it's headed more toward fort myers right. that area right which is further south down you, the coast you yeah. retweeted ron who said hurricane milton has intensified to a category five storm here's trump saying he's never heard the term category five hurricane how is this guy president and you <laughs> retweeted our friend hal sparks who 
uh, is you before you uh, feed him and get him wet at midnight. <laughs> <laughs> but he said uh, 2016 through 2020 was the costliest five-year stretch for tropical cyclones in the U.S. dating to 1980. Three of the five costliest hurricanes in U.S. history occurred in 2017. Uh, there were two Cat 5 hurricanes during his presidency. presidency. This hole doesn't give up. I mean, he's just nothing. No one's ever seen this before. He's, yeah. He says that about you every... Know, but, you're like, what? You know what he's talking about? He's not talking about Cat 5. He's talking about the word hurricane. He's never heard the word <laughs> hurricane heard before. Because he usually calls them water dumps. That's exactly what he was for four Very years. It was never, there's a big hurricane coming. No, it's the it's the wettest we've ever seen from the standpoint of water. water. Yes. Great big water dumps. What's going on with the water dumps? This is a, this is how weird he is. This is how effed up he is. He doesn't. Oh, he can't produce. The, this is when he was president. He couldn't produce the word hurricane, so he had to substitute water dumps, oh, God. like a four-year-old nuking hurricanes, pelting people in Puerto Rico Ugh. with paper towels, lying that three thousand people didn't die in Puerto Rico. Yeah. I, I just, I'm, you know what? I'm with Dr. Irwin Redliner on your show last week where he was talking about how stressful this is. Oh the my stress God. is just, I really, I mean, I had, I had a moment with Dr. Doom where I was like, uh, just connecting like E.T. and Elliot with just empathy. Like, yes. Oh my God, Dr. Doom. I'm right there with you. It is so stressful. <laughs>